I said, we have a history of back then, not a history like that, I don't you think in your day, as a history, mm -hmm. but, you know, she's making that, no, no, no. Uh, when I first met her, it was before, uh, before I was part of Breakfast Super Size, it was a morning show, and this is about, how many years ago? Four or five years ago. Five years ago. Has anybody heard of Kabbalah? Anybody, Kabbalah. Basically, Kabbalah believes that you are God. So you don't need Jesus, you're God. So she was actually the person who brought that in to the Philippines and actually attended that. And so I used to believe all that stuff too. And God had saved her from all that and of course worked in her heart. And now we're going to witness and hear her testimony to see how God did it all. So let's give it up for Jenny Lopez Tinapis. Thank you for uh, having me here tonight. Um, as will probably become very apparent, I have a huge fear of public speaking. Um, this is the hugest group by far I've ever spoken to. So, and I've only shared my testimony ever with people one-on-one, -on -one, so please bear with me. Um, I'm doing this to be obedient to God, and I'm praying that, I have no idea how, but I'm praying that He will um, somehow use how he has worked in my life to encourage you all. So, thanks for having me. Um, I guess I will just kind of start, try to give you some background on um, on my life before I share uh, when, when God called me to him. Um, I'm 36, just turned 36. I grew up Catholic, um, probably like most people in this room. Um, went to Catholic schools, always had an awareness of God, believed in God, um, definitely never had a personal relationship with Him. Um, maybe got a first, a Bible for my first communion or something, but had never read it. Um, so, but I was, I was, so that's my kind of religious background. Um, my mom is still a, a strong Catholic. Um, and then I, I felt very blessed. I had a really, I had a very good life, very stable life, blessed with a very loving family, um, good friends, financial security, all the things that most people think should make you happy. Um, and I had moments of happiness, and I was very grateful for everything I had. But as I started to get older, I just started to feel like something was missing, and started to question, like, is this really, is this really all there is? There, there was an emptiness, and I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe it's because I'm not married, or I don't have kids. Maybe that's when that'll change. Um, and so this, this longing in my heart just started to, to grow and it became something that like, I couldn't really ignore. Um, which I now recognize was God putting his spirit in me and beginning to draw me to him. Um, so during that whole time, I also I would say that as a person, I just kind of always felt like I had to put up a front. I wasn't comfortable sharing what was really going on inside. Um, and because I was blessed with such a good family and, and a good life, I, I never felt like I had the right to say that I was hurting or I was lonely or, because I just would always think, well, you know, compared to so many people, I have it so good, I can never, I can't complain. So people would always ask, you know, how, how are you? And I was always, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, you know, how are you? And always tried to be the person, that strong one that others would turn to. Um, and which, yeah, which wasn't sincere. Um, so that was this, that kind of takes me to the point that Judah talks about where I started really searching and I didn't know where to look and I was reading an article one day, I was getting a haircut and I read an article about Kabbalah and something just really piqued my curiosity. And so I started looking it up on the internet and started researching. I found out that my niece was super into it in LA. So I contacted her and 
ran, I just jumped in with everything I had. And I thought, and it starts talking about what drew me in is it talks about sharing. And life is about sharing. And so I, I got so interested and I thought, wow, okay, this is it. And I did what, I, I, I thought I had something good to share and I, I was on to something and I wanted to share it with other people. So started organizing a, a study group and, um, and that took me down that path. But Kabbalah was all, it's all about earning. It's, um, it's, it's the opposite of, <laughs> of Jesus's message, the opposite of grace. It's about how with every little act you do, you can, you can earn more light. That's basically, you can earn more favor. You know, you share more, you get more light. You do this, you get more light. You hang around people that you can't stand, you get more light. You just, anything you do that's hard for you, you get more light. So I was running around tired, doing everything I could that was challenging and trying to stretch myself to get more light. And it was getting kind of exhausting. And at that time, you know, even though I didn't know yet whom I was praying to, I started praying and asking God, well, you know, alone in my room, are, are you, can you show yourself to me? Like I'm trying, I'm trying really hard to reach you. I, I think I may be onto something, but you know, I'm not sure and I, I need you to show me. And at that time, he, he put um, new friends in my life um, and they were Christians. I had never actually had close Christian friends before. Um, actually, you know, years before had just from culture and from, from what other people had thought, I thought, oh my gosh, born again, that's, you know, no way, that's weird. And, and so when they came into my life, I was eyeing them with that kind of suspicion at first, like, uh oh. And, but I started to see something in them that was different. I started to see this sense of peace, no matter what was going on in their lives. I, start, I saw this real compassion, whether it was in the way that they listened to me or prayed for me or talked about someone else. There was this really sincere compassion that I, that there, there was just something that set them apart. And so that started to get me curious. And um, just some, some history, at the same time, I was still studying Kabbalah because they, the teachers had, they, they say, there's no conflict, it's not a religion. Um, we have a lot of students that are Christians, um, Catholics, from all religions. So, so in my mind, there was no conflict. So I was still into that, but then spending time with these Christian friends, and um, they were inviting me to church, so I was going to church at Victory. And, um, and so, but as I was praying, I started to feel that there was a conflict. So even if the teacher said there wasn't, and even though my Christian friends were very, very gentle, we'd argue a lot, we'd talk for hours and hours and hours about God, and I would tell them, you know, I, um, that, that's great, it's amazing that you believe that, but I believe Jesus is, is just a man. Great man, but just a man. And um, I just pray that I will have the same grace that they had when I said that, because it was, it was really through those conversations that they gently allowed me to go through my own process um, and for God himself to show me uh, the truth. And so that's, that's basically how God really started working in my life. And, and then um, a good, good friend of mine, um, Alex Compton, was uh, one of those friends that I mentioned, and he was he really put a lot of time into me, discipling me, and just very patiently having these conversations with me. And then one day he actually um, just drew out the gospel and Romans and how we all fall short of the glory of God and how we need a savior. And, and, and he put the cross as the bridge. I don't know if any of you have ever seen that drawing, but I had never seen the gospel actually that simply. And, and so I guess I had never fully understood it. And, um, and it was that moment when I, when I saw it and when we talked about it that I, that I realized I, I was a sinner and no matter how hard I tried 
on my own to be a good daughter, a good sister, a good friend, um, a, a good boss, that, that I still fell short and that I needed a savior and that on my own I really could do nothing. And so that was when I, that was uh, four years ago um, when I invited Jesus into my life and um, asked him to be my Lord and savior.